Oke, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks God that today we can meet again in the subject of English for tourism. And today we are going to listen the student presentation related to the tourism destination of the historical heritage. And starting for our lecture today, let's be reciting together as Malah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Well, I think uh, today uh, there are two students will present uh, their four pointers. Firstly, Harith Norfaidi, and secondly, M. Fajri Alarik. I would like to give opportunity to Harith Norfaidi. Harith, your time is five to seven minutes or seven to ten minutes, please. Yeah, thank you for your opportunity, sir. Uh, I, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello, everyone. Greetings. Uh, I, and I would like to present you some of the beautiful information for uh, here. And as you have seen, as you have uh, may 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 some of you some of you may have heard, and I bet some of hope some of you haven't heard about this uh, about this site, but I I just want to talk about this site uh, uh, in depth. But before that, uh, I will I will begin with the let's talk about the, the Situ Lembang, a hidden tranquility and meaningful place in northernmost point of Bandung. And before that, let's take a look at the brief history here. Uh, do you know that Situ Lembang is located in the northernmost point of Bandung? Uh, in the exact point is located at uh, Kar uh, Karyawangi village, uh, Parongpong, uh, Parongpong, and in the West Bandung Regency in West Java. And it is formed as a caldera before uh, uh, turns turned out to be a lake uh, after the Mount Tangkuban Prahu, or uh, somebody would say uh, archaic of Mount Sunda, greater Mount Sunda in, uh, from volcanic eruption in two or three million years ago. And in 1920, in 1920 by the Netherlands government who controlled the Bandung, uh, it, it is built to be a lake, uh, it is function to be a uh, preserve the water uh, demand uh, of the entire Bandung region. That's the function uh, as a water laden or water laden. Yeah, and after we got it our independence in 1945. Uh, it comes uh, used as a military drill facility in 1952 by Kopassus or uh, Special Forces of Indonesian military. And it is also run by West Java province government for forest conservation and uh, tourism sites uh, two years later in 1954. Uh, and after we look at uh, this brief history here, what's the uniqueness about and what's the meaning may, some of you may, uh, may have asked, what is the meaning of tranquility in Sintu Lembang? What is the meaningful, uh, uh, meaningful in Sintu Lembang? Let's take a look at the uniqueness here. First, the Sintu Lembang is located at triangle border point of Bandung, Purwakarta and Subang. So it is the more northern more northernmost point of Bandung, but it is also the triangular border point between three regions, Bandung, Purwakarta, and Subang. And it is unique also because only, only this site uh, that uh, use into as a two function, first as a tourist, tourism site, and the second as a military facility at the same time. And it is still used as a two functions uh, until now. 
And the third is located in the, no in the northernmost point of Bandung. If you want to look at uh, where the, the, more, the northernmost point of Bandung, this is where you want to go. And uh, the fourth is uh, Sitolembang also serve as a spring stream between Mount, Bur Mount Burangrang and uh, Mount Takuban Prahu. And Sitolembang is a, like, like in the middle of uh, two, mount, two great mountains in Bandung. So uh, as you have heard before that, uh, I explained that it is built as a lake in 1912 by Netherlands government to conserve water demands for Bandung region. So as it as it is until now, it also for water conservation for Bandung region. Uh, it is used by PDAM. And so you you may be careful when touching the water here or may uh, or you have a contact with a water here because it is hard to be clean, is hard to be a pure because it is to serve the entire people of Bandung region. So uh, swimming is highly prohibited here. So do not swim here. And next is when you ask about the tranquility, it is because the Situ Lembang is distant from residential location. So you can camp here, you can take a uh, uh, you take uh, comfort for uh, here and you just have a uh, uh, tranquility here basically it is mean that uh, you have no any surrounding sounds or any uh, any problem with sounds that you face daily in city or uh, in the residential location it is uh, nice to you if you uh, could take uh, a cam here. So, and the last, uh, and the last point is a nice view of lake and the surrounding of mountain chains because it is located between in the middle of mountain Burangrang and uh, Mount uh, Tangkuban Prahu. Uh, Situ Lembang is located also in mountain chains of Greater Bandung mountains uh, from the way that. Uh, that uh, located from the west to the east. Uh, so when you came here, when you take a look, take a look at the, your surrounding, you could find uh, everywhere around you is everywhere is a mountain, from Burangrang uh, to uh, Tangkuban Prahu, and its hills. Their hills also could be seen here. So. That is why uh, I called Situ Lembang a hidden tranquility and meaningful in the most point of Bandung. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, how is the five to the five in presenting about the Situ Lembang? Well, the next presenter is M. Padrin Alaric. M. Padrin Alaric, are you joining us? Hello, Padrin. Okay, please. Mister, you right. time wait, wait. seven to ten minutes or five to seven minutes, please. All right. Thank you. Okay, the voice is not yet clear. <clears throat> you sound. Yep. Uh, for my friends, can I want to touch screen? Leo, please. Okay, go ahead about your presentation. Okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, first of all, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello everyone in this class, mm, all my maths, and of course our lecturer, mm -hmm. Mr. Andy mm -hmm. and Mrs. Mm -hmm. Nordiani. Okay, uh, everyone, 
In this occasion, I will give some presentation with the title that is the Nagun Temple, the Heritage and the God's Tolerance. Uh, first of all, uh, the temple in this title, it means, uh, what is it called? Buddhist place or worship um, that is according to the dictionary that I read or in Bahasa, it's called a Vihara. Okay, uh, next into the topic, yes. Yeah. As you can see, as you can see in the, my PowerPoint, the Dragon Temple is located in one Surya Kanchana Street in okay. Bogor. was built in 1860s as a Hook Tech Bio Temple. And after 1965, uh, has transformed into a shrine or monastery, as we call it. Uh, in this uh, words, Tech means virtue and uh, hook, it means uh, sustenance and bio means home. So if we uh, concluding, hook tech bio, it means some host or goodness and sustenance. Right. Um, so next, uh, oh, yes, yeah. But even through the Nagun is a monastery, it is also allowed to practice to other China's belief in there, like uh, Confucianism and Taoism. And then the position or what we call uh, extends or of, or um, yeah, there's, there's monastery in this in the middle of Sundanese community. It's also um, show, show, show some uh, Sundanese, Sundanese influence in there such as there is an altar from the Eyang Bogor and Raden Surya Kencana as a tribute to them, as no as uh, the uh, forefather of the Sundanese people in Bogor. Uh, yes, so we now we start going inside to the temple. As you can see, the basic building from this building is called Miao. And the main building is divided into the three section. Uh, the the, the one is terrace, the and twice is room, and the three is the sac, um, sacred space. Yeah, we call it that. And then the ornaments or decoration in it are divided into five categories. Uh, the first one is animal motifs, uh, and then the Lens motif and nature motif. It's like uh, fire, water, and sand, and geometric motif and legend of objectification of gods. Uh, yeah, mm, inside uh, uh, inside the building, we can also see many attributes in the form of status and reliefs. Yes, uh, which is is actually a pair of dragons, tigers, turtle, hummingbirds, and lions. So uh, everyone, basically the characteristic of China's architecture are clearly we can see in this building, uh, especially mm -hmm. in terms of the structure and construction. Uh, so maybe just that it's for me, uh, for my presentation. Uh, I'm so deeply sorry if, if I'm my mistake throughout my presentation. Thank you, guys, everyone, lecturer, my mates. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you very much. And Hajirin uh, Amarik. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my students, so I would like to inform you that uh, starting from now, please, please you make the brief comment. Uh, to one of the uh, presenter and then send to the WhatsApp group. Okay, so not until me and Budiani uh, finish the next uh, break uh, comment. Well, I think uh, it is a good idea and I would like to give opportunity to Budiani, please, to make the brief comment also to uh, the student presentation. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Bapa. And okay, I have uh, several notes from these two presenters. And the first one is from Harith Norfaizi. I think that you have that 
kind of British accent, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> because uh, it's quite interesting that my that our student have that kind of uh, unique accents. Uh, maybe uh, Harris is adopting from British accents, or maybe from all Australia. But I I guess it's good. Uh, but you still have to focus on what you want to present instead of your accent. But it's not. Uh, but it's good. Uh, <laughs> It's really unique. So Harris, I have uh, some notes about your presentation here. Uh, the first one is about your title. So I believe that you still use a Sundanese title, Situ, Situ Lembang. But in your infographic, actually, you already mentioned about the lake. So maybe you forgot about the title. So uh, and the second one, is I, I just want to know that have you been there? Have you been to the Situ Lembang? Yes, I have been there twice. Uh, and I I didn't expect that uh, Situ Lembang is a whole name, not a translation from Sundanese, I think. Oh, I see. It's just like Mount Tangkuban Prahu. Uh, I, I feel that so I didn't translate the Situ word and take as it is. Okay, so uh, it is meant then it depends on what your, uh, maybe for some place, uh, there are a uh, original name that came from the local language, but I think that you should uh, investigate more about that kind of uh, the name of the place. So my point of view, uh, regarding your presentation is quite good. Uh, and then you are complement with your British accent that is more interesting for us to hear and see. And then uh, the third one that uh, I guess this place is a kind the germ place that a hidden place that I really know about this place before. So thank you uh, that Harris could explore more, could explore more about this place so I think this hidden germ is quite good and could be uh, an alternative for us to came to that place so I think your presentation is good and well done Harris thank you for your presentation and the second one is from Fajrin Alarik about the temple so Fajrin you could be more relaxed. Um, maybe uh, I I noticed that you have at first that you're having difficulty about your PowerPoint, so it became your so your. I see that you're still nervous about your presentation uh, due to your having the cold having difficulties about to share the PowerPoint. So I moved to my notes about your presentation. Well, from my point of view that you could elaborate more about the this kind of the ornaments. What is the meaning of each of the ornaments? Uh, so you already mentioned about there are five ornaments in the temple. So you could uh, give meaning. Uh, you could share and elaborate more about the meaning of the symbol. So there are five symbols or five categories like divided into five, flora, fauna, nature, geometrics, and God's notives. So uh, it means that this place having this kind of heritage, but you could elaborate more about the symbols, the, each symbols of that you already mentioned. So. I think you have that kind of product knowledge about these five symbols, right? The flora represents what, and the fauna represents what kind of meaning. So I think you should elaborate more about uh, the five these five symbols and relate with this heritage, and then also relating with this good tolerance according to your title. So uh, there, yeah, well, you should be connect and then interpret and in, it's, uh, the tourism is regarding about your interpretation, especially 
for the heritage and historic interpretation. You should, so you should elaborate more about this symbol as part of your interpretation. I think, okay, and for the next, I think you could elaborate more about that place instead of you are just mentioned about uh, this is the living room and other is just um, the other place that you could have found in this place. But I think, uh, and I think that would be all. Thank you for your presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Bu Diani. I think it is a really good comment. And student, please, you make is caring about the Budiani Jason or uh, comment. I think uh, I also similar with Budiani, so I, I totally agree with Budiani comment. Firstly, that the title, the title should be represented the content. Okay, <laughs> so I think it is uh, uh, very important about the title. The title uh, not only. Uh, should be interesting but also should be represented about the content because of that my uh, uh, comment also firstly to Harris uh, okay, about the sheet to landmark okay you you should uh, explaining about the what the meaning of sheet to because in Sudanese language as a difference between sheet to between empang you know between balong <laughs> so I think the C2 and Dano, it is different. Maybe Dano is the, the big leg, okay? But C2 is the little leg. I think uh, uh, not uh, to be confused to the uh, foreign visitor, foreign visitor uh, who want to visit the C2 Lemba. Uh, if you uh, said the C2 Lemba and you uh, just uh, translate the C2 similar with the leg, when the visitor said, I think it is not the big leg, it is the little leg <laughs> of Lembang, okay? Secondly, maybe uh, uh, Harris Lurufaiji not aware that, didn't aware that uh, in in Lembang, there are the two little leg, the two situs, okay? Between the situ Lembang, what uh, Harris Lurufaiji explained, and the situ Lembang near the Bosha Ospatori, <laughs> become the market <laughs> marketplace okay <laughs> and this be, became also the tourism destination you should explain the differentiation between the city lembang in the uh, what is border between the bandung it is also not not exactly bandung because uh, uh, west bandung you know bandung barat regency Purwakarta, and subang and city lembang uh, 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 near the bosha Weeding, okay, <laughs> should be explained because uh, you you will explaining uh, this to the foreign visitor, not to a local uh, a tourist, okay. Uh, and in my opinion, unfortunately, that uh, what Harris not find the choice about the tourism destination. I think it is the maybe maybe uh, not exactly choice or wrong choice because as you have explained that this destination is forbidden place forbidden site because uh, this place become the uh, training place for the uh, what is Indonesian military right <laughs> because of that I think it is not for a tourism destination whoever want to visit uh, this place, I think forbidden if there is the compassus training, okay? <laughs> so I think uh, it is not yet suitable for promoting this uh, tourism uh, destination because I think it is the, uh, the forbidden place <laughs> to, to everyone to, uh, I, I mean, for the uh, people who wants to uh, visit uh, this site, okay? Because this is the the, the training camp uh, for the Kopassus, for the special force of Indonesian military, and uh, maybe Harris Nurpaji in historical perspective should be also explain why 
this youth climbing become the training camps from the Copacus because in 1952, okay? Because one of the founders, one of the founding fathers of Kopasu is the uh, Le Lembang uh, people, Lembang figure, Muhammad Jondi, okay? Uh, <laughs> he is the, 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 Dutch, uh, the Dutch man, the, 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 the Orang Belanda, uh, but he became the Indonesian citizen and he lived in the Lembang uh, area and because of that maybe uh, according to Muhammad uh, Jode, City Lembang is good idea, good place for training the citizen force. Okay, so <laughs> should be explaining about the history. Okay, and uh, 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 of course uh, because this is the special place for the uh, training uh, Indonesian military, the infrastructure is less. Okay, the the the, the minimum they ask the. Uh, no, no, no more about the infrastructure building, and it is hard to uh, going to uh, what is it to uh, Lembang. Okay, so I think uh, <laughs> as Ibu Deni mentioned, your presentation is very good, but unfortunately, your destination <laughs> is <laughs> you, you, you are not exactly. A choice. Uh, what is wrong? A choice in uh, destination because it is not for tourism. It is for the training camp for the Indonesian military. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Good. But uh, uh, good. What Haris Norfaji uh, presentation and uh, your English is yeah uh, British accent. And meanwhile, my English is uh, Sunanese or Subang accent. Accent. Okay. <laughs> Dialect. <laughs> okay, uh, next for M. Pajrin Alari. Okay, Pajrin, uh, maybe you uh, uh, should be uh, following the Haris Norfaji uh, presentation. Okay, good. <laughs> but uh, your presentation just uh, for a minute. So I think you should more explanation as Budiani mentioned what the meaning of what is a symbol, what's the meaning of uh, ornament, and so on and so forth. This the interesting uh, tourism destination, but uh, as I have mentioned uh, earlier, also uh, title should be represented the content. Okay, so in this context, I would like to criticize about what the meaning of tolerance here in this context. Okay, because uh, tolerance here should be uh, what is mean uh, that not about the content of this temple uh, I, I have uh, no see that the ornament uh, what is representation about uh, toler to tolerant but uh, should be meaning that tolerant here is that Islamic ummah Islamic community as the majority in this population uh, giving permission to this breeding Okay, so uh, I think uh, tolerant here, it is the uh, uh, Islamic Ummah as the majority in this country, not forbidden about the uh, Buddha temple. In this context is uh, the, what is uh, Dango temple, okay? <laughs> it is, uh, in, in my opinion about the tolerant, because it, uh, when when you your title is about the tolerant, when kind of tolerant? I I, I have no information about uh, your presentation related to the uh, tolerant. And then uh, uh, I would like also uh, what is as about it is interesting to note here why in this temple there is no picture about the Buddha about the Siddhartha or about the Kong Hucu. The picture or the statue, okay. So uh, why the the picture or the statue of Siddhartha as the founder of the Buddha religion or the Kong uh, Hucu generally in the China temple, okay, not available in this uh, building. I think uh, should be explaining also in order maybe you you can explaining kind of acculturation, okay, between the. China civilization in one hand and the local culture in the other. 
Okay, so uh, I, I think M pattern analytics is a good idea about this uh, title. Your your choice is uh, relevant, particularly maybe for the pagan visitor for the China, okay? <laughs> for China, for the Singapore, for for other Buddha religion majority in the uh, country when uh, come to uh, what is this uh, temple may be interesting, but you should answer in explaining uh, something should, should more information about uh, this uh, uh, temple site okay so uh, uh, i think that's my okay uh, the last is about the maybe the, the doctrine okay uh, what kind of what is school of thought this temple as uh, you know in in buddha religion there are the two mainstream in school of thoughts what we call is the Mahayana uh, school of thoughts and Hinayana school of thoughts. Uh, or maybe in if this temple related to the Confucianism uh, should be also explaining uh, the relationship between the doctrine of Confucianism and uh, the picture, the what the ornament about uh, this uh, a temple. Because of the Budiani said, you should be explaining more about the ornament, about the symbol, about the meaning, uh, what, ki what kind of relic in uh, this uh, temple. Okay? Uh, however, uh, your presentation also good, although just in the short time, <laughs> just a four minutes, and should be explaining, more explaining uh, 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 something about uh, your or what is a tourism site or a, a historical uh, site. Good, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that's my uh, brief comment and uh, let's ending our lecture uh, today by reciting together also. Alhamdulillah. 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 Thank you very much and insyaAllah we will meet again in the next week. And please, for the uh, next student who will present about uh, the PowerPoint, I think Haris not 5G presentation, M. Pajin Alipat is good, and please, you match the role model <laughs> with with your accent, with, with your dialect, okay? I, I think in, in English is uh, not universal language you, you can speaking in english with the for example style or dialect sundani jawani indonesian malay and so on and so forth what is important here we are understand what you are talking about okay <laughs> okay thank you very much wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh permission to leave bapak okay thank you okay, student, please you can leave from